pressure. Um, if, if you've been listening to the sermons of 2023, the first dealt with uh, the shortness of time, knowing that our Lord is to return to us and time is short, we need to be working. The next one dealt with the fear of the Lord. And uh, you need to understand if anyone who understands pressure, they can't neglect that a lot of pressure has to do with time restraints, deadlines, getting things done within a specific time. This adds pressure. If there was any person that I could think of who had pressure, it would have had to be Jesus. Uh, before we even get to the point where he's hanging on the cross, taking on the pressure of the sins of the whole world, past, present, and future, before we even get to that, we deal with him being born into time and having a restricted time frame for his ministry. His ministry was three years. He had to teach a lot while in the body for three years. There was a whole lot of preparation for that ministry. Preparation, this was not in my notes, but help me, Holy Spirit. Preparation helps us to deal with pressure. A lot of times when we have pressure, uh, too much pressure, where it overwhelms us, it's that we haven't prepared properly for the situations that we're in. We're not prepared. 30 years of preparation, three years of ministry. That was Jesus. He had to do a lot in a, in a short time. And often he would say, don't you know that I, I won't always be with you. He knew that he had so much to accomplish. So he understood pressure. And I'm going to tell you that this Hebrew audience, although this audience is not um, largely those who walked with Jesus. This is a generation past those who walked with Jesus. Uh, when we look at the background of the book of Hebrews, uh, in the early centuries, people thought, a lot thought that it was probably Paul who wrote the book. Uh, but when they looked at the literature that Paul wrote, he always introduced himself. The apostle Paul, Paul always spoke of, of things being concerned, of people using his name, uh, for things that he wasn't involved in, using his authority and his name. Uh, so it's highly unlikely that he would write and not address who he was. When all of his literature, he addresses who he was. Then within the text, it tells us that these are those who heard the gospel uh, from the original. So this is, Paul always says that Jesus came to him directly. And, and you know, he sat with him like a man and taught him. So Paul is an apostle himself who sat and learned from Christ when the book of Hebrews is, uh, is, is removed from the originals. Having said that, no one really knows who wrote the, uh, the book of, of, of Hebrews. Um, what we do know from chapter 1 is that these are Hebrews. These are, it's written for Hebrews. Uh, who are in some kind of a diaspora, or they are, it's believed they're in Rome. They're not located around Palestine, as it points to friends in Italy and, and uh, brothers there. So it's believed, it's, a, it's believed to be a body that's in Rome and under a lot of pressure from persecution, severe persecution. Um, and it's written largely to an audience that is considered spiritually immature. 
And I hope that you hear me well. Because when we get to Hebrews chapter 5, he tells them, you should have grown up by now. You should have been mature enough now to eat strong food, but you're still on breast milk. You should have been grown. And we have to understand when looking at the context that he's talking about, I understand that you're suffering a lot. I know what you're going through and how difficult it is. Perhaps you and I aren't used to losing things if we, I mean, if we say we love Jesus or our faith, we're not really persecuted physically for our faith. So it may be hard to, to understand, but pressure and persecution, it shows if we're really growing in our faith, if we're under pressure and, and how we respond to it. So they were under persecution for their faith and under a lot of pressure from society and Apparently, they weren't responding as well as this writer thought that they should have. He thought that they would be stronger in the midst of this persecution. So he wants to encourage them, uh, but he also wants to correct them. Come on, you, you, you've been through a, a, a lot now, and, and I expected you to respond differently. Point number one, it's not going to be on the screen. Point number one, remembering God establishes you. There's some things that you, as we get into the background of Hebrews, there's some things in your own personal background that were there to establish you. There's some things that you went through in your childhood that seemed like it was a lot. And it was there to establish you so now in your present state, you can actually say, God, if you brought me through that, then you should have grown to say, if you brought me through that and that and that and that, I know you're going to bring me through this. But when we help me, Holy Spirit, but when we've been through that, 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 and that, and now we get here, and we whimper like we forgot all that he brought us through. It prevents us from being established in our faith. And that was the purpose. In other words, we render our past as useless for our development. And instead of growing to where you need something stronger, it's like you still suck in mommy's breast and you pass for it. You understand me? And, 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 and the whole thing is our experiences are supposed to establish when we remember God. I didn't think I was going to get out of this, but you brought me out somehow. And this is what the Hebrew writer wanted to get across to them. I know you're going through something, but you've been going through. Let's, and God's been with you, and he is with you. Now, when we when we, we, we go to point number two, face your pressure, not your habits. Now, the book of Hebrews, this audience was always under pressure. When we look at Hebrews, the 10th chapter, 33rd and 34th verse, is telling us that for their faith, they were thrown in prison. For their faith, they were beaten. Now, if you understand Roman society, it was a very uh, material world. It was very lustrous, sensually driven, possessions, these things, the lust of the flesh and the world. Yeah, their possessions were taken from them because of their faith. This is what they're going through. Because I believe in Jesus, you've taken my, my house from me. You've taken my mama's house because she taught me Jesus. 
You understand? This is what they, they were going through. I mean, they were under a lot of pressure. My job, I, I, I'm losing my source of income because I love Jesus. That's a lot of pressure. You know, and, and it's in times of pressure whether we either stand or we crumble. And uh, we need to understand that pressure is the mother to sin. Let me explain this. When I say pressure is the mother to sin, most of our sins, most of our bad habits, they're birthed in times of pressure. Give you an example that's relevant for, for young people. Okay? The very body that we live in puts pressure on us to do wrong. A teenage body is pressured with all kinds of hormones. All kinds of hormones. They feel a lot of things raging within them in the teenage. This is a pressure that's on you. And yet you have a Bible that says no to this and to this. And yes to this and to this. It says yes to uh, yes to sexual relations in marriage. No to outside of marriage. So what it says, but the pressure is saying now, now, now. And you need to understand the ancient world catered to this pressure. I'm talking sexual pressure. The ancient world catered to it. They made them marry a lot younger. They tell us they did that because they live shorter. It's not true. The Bible tells us God shortened their years to how much? 120. That's what the Bible tells us. From way, way back, God shortened their years from thousands to 120. You understand? David himself, I think, died at around 70 years old. I mean, it's the normal, normal. You understand? They got them married a lot younger to cater to their sexual desire. We're more reasonable today. We're more reasonable today. Now we go to school and do all these things, but we're also more sinful. There are very few uh, virgins getting married today. When it was more common there, they catered to it. It's interesting. Time, time has, has changed. But these pressures causing people to sin and to desire to sin. You look at most of your habits those who fall into sensual, sexual sin, it's usually under times of pressure. They suffered a loss somewhere. They're broken. They had a problem in a relationship. Now they're hurting, and somebody is there to comfort them. It's always, it's usually pressure where it comes to sin. Any habit you could think of that people want to break, it's usually the pressure that leads them to need a form of relief from pressure. And usually sinful behavior comes as a sense of false comfort to pressures that we have. We need to understand this. And, and, and what's happening in the book of Hebrews is the pressure is real and people are starting to either cling to false comforts of denial and trying to fit into the world, tired of it, or they're drawing to their knees and to prayer and to God more. And the writer of Hebrews is saying, guys, you, you, you're too weak. You need to be stronger. You need to be clinging to God more. And, and the way we deal, help me, Holy Spirit, help me, Holy Spirit, the way we, we deal with this is there's a whole lot of people who say, man, I want to stop drinking. But they're not dealing with the circumstances that are leading them to drink. I, I, I want to stop, uh, you know, I want to stop sexual relations. 
you know, outside of marriage, but they're not dealing with the things that are drawing them to this behavior. I want to stop smoking. They're not dealing with what is the pressures I have that make me run to the cigarette, some to the drug, or whatever the case is. There are pressure situations that we think are so big they can't be dealt with. We can only comfort ourselves. But we need to understand that our God is so big, bigger than any pressure situation. And if he's allowed pressure situations in our life, he's given us a means of real comfort. To I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. He's given us a means of real comfort to get out. And the hardest thing, for it's easy for us to be on the milk. What's the milk? God, you do it all for me. I don't want to work out my own salvation. I don't want to stand amidst the pressure and the persecution. I just want to do what feels good for me right now. That's the milk. We're we on the milk of the word. He said we should be strong after all that we've been through with God. We should be stronger than where we are. Help me, Holy Ghost. And we come to point number three. Before I even get there. Our pressure may be worse than the Hebrew audience pressure. You know why? Because when you say I love Jesus and you have an enemy that says, well, I hate Jesus. So I'm taking your house. I'm whipping you and I'm beating you and I'm throwing you in jail. You can see that this is a clear war. And you make a decision. Are you going to fight this war for Jesus? We in a more complex situation where our pressure and our persecution is not necessarily from those making themselves out as Satan. And our pressure is, is coming at us and our persecution as though, as though we've chosen. It comes even within the church with this high call for prosperity and, and material things that add pressure onto our lives. So you can go to a church and see all these bling bling cars and rings and, and all of these things and if you could see the pressure that was on these people to keep up with the Kardashians and have the nicest car and have the fanciest clothes and, and, and look the best. The pressure that's on them makes them more loyal to a satanic system than what they confess to be loyal to in church. They will have more to give to the systems of the world than what they would have to give to souls being saved and delivered and ministered. Because pressure is just they're too much. Our pressures deceive us. So then we come to Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2, and point number 3. Point number 3 tells us, help me, Holy Spirit. It said, it's, lay aside any and everything that adds pressure and persecution. Lay aside anything and everything that adds pressure and persecution. I remember I was counseling, and this is some years ago, I'm counseling this 16-year-old girl. She's in my office. She's crying. It's just so bad. What's, what's wrong? My boyfriend. He, I don't know why he just, he just, he, he, he keeps cheating. And I love him, but he, he just, I, I, I do, I love him. But, and I'm, I'm, you, this is, this, you put this pressure on yourself. And it's not going to get better if your belly starts getting swollen. You, you added this pressure onto yourself. And now you're feeling persecuted by a pressure that you put on, thinking it was to comfort you. 
And this is, I mean, we all are like this. If we really thought, what can I do without? What can I? Some things you can't. You, you got to deal with it. Some things you can lay aside and you won't die. Some things you can really do without it. And you can still live. In fact, you may just live better. So we lay aside every sin and weight which easily besets us is what, let me say it properly. Because we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, lay aside every sin and weight that easily besets you. Other words, the whole 11th chapter of Hebrews tells us of all these great people who walked with God. How they prioritized God. If they was going to take any pressure, it was going to start with God. That's how much faith they had. And the world was not worthy of those people. And yet they're still around, surrounding us. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Not only does God have more angels than the demons, one third left with the devil. He's got two thirds. Then there's a cloud of witnesses, of those who stood, who are also like angels now. Those who stood with God and believed and focused on God. So if we lay aside understanding that we're surrounded by this cloud and we lay aside things that would add weights onto us. Now this is a profound message to this Hebrew audience. Why? Because this is at a time where the government is taking their property. And he's pretty much saying, render unto Caesar what Caesar's, render unto God what's God. If they can take it, it must be theirs. If God's not stopping them, it's theirs to take. Don't even look at it as though they're taking it. They're not taking it. You're just laying it aside. Because it don't benefit you no way. If God's allowed them to take it, you just land it. It's, it's, and focus where? On Christ. That's where your focus is going to be. That's your prize possession. That's your pride. That's your hope. That's your joy. That's your strength. That's, that's everything. Christ. Let us think back. Let us think back. Jesus, we're going back to the time of Jesus. Jesus is, is having a crowd. He doesn't want to send them away hungry. And he says, you know what? Peter, what do we have? He says, we just got a fish and some, some, some loaves of bread. No, Peter, what do we have? Oh, we got some fish. We got some, some loaves of, of, of bread. No, no. Peter, what you're supposed to say is, we have you. <laughs> if we have you, we got more than what we need. It may not feel like it. It may not look like it. But if we got you, Jesus, all we need is already supplied in you. At your word, anything is possible. Oh, what am I worried about? What am I stressed about? What am I pressured about? I got you, Jesus. As long as I got you, I got joy. As long as I got you, I got peace. As long as I got you, I got comfort. Why am I crying? Why am I stressed and pressured and down and about and complaining and swearing? I got you. from nobody. There's no pressure that's going to overwhelm us. We don't got to fear about tomorrow. We can handle anything. This is how we handle our pressure. Get comforted 
by the one who promised, I won't leave you without comfort. Lay aside that sin. Lay aside that habit. Lay it aside. You got me. Need you to trust me more. Come off of that milk now. Trust my word. If I promised it, I'm going to do it. If I said it, it's going to be. Hallelujah. That's right, sir. Let us lift our hands to the heavens. Under time of pressure, the, the, the man of God is not always able to lay hands. Sometimes a man of God can barely stand himself under times of intense pressure. There were many priests during times of pressure who left the faith and yielded to the Roman power. And there's times where you just need to, everybody needs to just say, Lord, have your way in my life. Trust you. I want to depend on you more. Can we can we do that? Lift your hands up to God if you're able and just pray to Him. Take this time right now. Tell Him that you tell Him what you need to tell Him to be closer to Him, to draw near to Him. Oh God, thank you, Jesus. Tell Him what you need to tell Him right now to get close. Oh, He says, draw near to me. I will draw near to you. This is the altar call right now. It's you and God. God is the priest. He's telling, he's calling for your attention. Speak to him now. Speak to him now. He will speak to you. He will touch you. He will comfort you. He will lay his hands on you. The angels are there right now surrounding you. Thank you, Jesus. The angels are covering you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, 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 thank you,